I'm a Canadian. I grew up dependent on American hegemony. My whole vision of the world was there was a liberal democratic state that would do the wrong thing until the end of until the last moment, then kind of do the right thing. <clears throat> We're in a new world. The passage of that American hegemony, the emergence of, let's be frank, and, and all respect to China, a great civilization, but this is a single party, this is a single party state. And it's taking us, if this is the par power that generates or dominates the 21st century, it's an unfamiliar world. I do not think China will be the new empire. But the idea that the world is led by a single-party state um, causes anxiety. And, and in a post-imperial world, a post-imperial world is wonderful because we get back to self-determination, in my view. We get back to the nation-state as the driver of politics. But we're, we're, we're suddenly in a world without the hegemon that used to have an association of democratic values, and now we're into a, a new world. I think that produces a great deal of anxiety. And let me um, also help, um, if I could, uh, relieve your anxiety a little bit, as you earlier pointed out, about, about uh, the potential for Chinese dominance of the world. Uh, let me say this, I will wager a bet today that in 25 years when we return for the 50th anniversary of the Nesca conference, <laughs> Um, that, You're very welcome. <laughs> that China will not be dominating the world at that time. Uh, and I'll wager that bet uh, for two reasons. One is because I don't believe China intends to dominate the world. And, and number two is even if they did, they would fail at it. Uh, because we moved way past beyond the age of dominance. Uh, I think it's, it will be difficult for any one power to dominate the world. It's the wrong mindset. In my lifetime, just in my career, peaceful rise has already happened. It's a fact on the ground. Um, we went from, since I started my career in business, we went from a poor agrarian country to a behemoth that you know that is China today. Behemoth in every respect. Okay? Yet, no country has been invaded, not a single shot fired, no violence. And if you look at human history, the rise of every power from Athenian Empire to the Roman Empire to the British Empire to America's manifest destiny to the rise of modern Germany and modern Japan, Ottoman Empire, every single one of them, their rise was accompanied by tremendous bloodshed, colonization, wars, massacres, okay? And China's rise to date has been bigger and faster than them all. Mm -hmm. I share the same admiration we have for the rise of China. I really share it. I've, I've been there every year since the 80s, and it's amazing. But you said rightly that the past history of empires has been an history of aggression and supremacy and hegemony. So those of us who like to study history and political science, it's also say, now the rise of China, why would it be different? That's why I came back to my point. It's so important that we work together for a world based on rules. Yeah. Also, it's, it's in our fundamental interest for mankind that we have uh, China committed, and now China says uh, that he's committed, and uh, uh, President Xi Jinping has made very clear commitments about that in the United Nations, even in Davos. He came to Davos, made that point. So uh, the question is, the history shows to us that empires tend to be um, assertive sometimes slash aggressive. Okay, now you say to me, and I'm sure that you are sincere, that China will be different but we have to be sure that we have a sufficient global order that can prevent us from more accidents in the future. That is my point. Yeah.